Hi, my name is Ben, and I've got a few words to say about equality in physics. I want to start by asking who these physicists are, whether you recognise them. You probably don't, but they are the winners of the 1974 Nobel Prize in Physics, which was largely awarded for the discovery of the pulsar. It's Martin Ryle and Anthony Hewish. Now here's someone you may recognise. Uh, this is Jocelyn Bell. She helped build the telescope that found the pulsars. She had sole responsibility for operating the telescope that found the pulsars. She was the one who analysed the data and noticed a strange signal that was the pulsar, sometimes staying up all night to analyse the data. And when the discovery was announced and the media came, this is what happened. I have my photograph taken standing on a bank, of a river, that is, sitting on a bank, standing on a bank, examining Vergas records. Meanwhile, the journalists were asking relevant questions like, was I taller or not quite as tall as Princess Margaret? And how many boyfriends did I have at the time? And Jocelyn Bell did not win the Nobel Prize for finding pulsars. Now, you might think that um, you know things have changed since 1974 and everything's fine now, but if you look around, and admittedly it's harder this year with the uh, um, uh, COVID situation, you would find that uh, there's not gender equality in physics in Australia, at least. And this leads to issues when we're teaching the course. And we've been aware of these issues for many years, and what we're starting to do, because we find this approach works, is really tackle these issues head on and talk about them openly. The fact that there is a gender discrepancy in the numbers of people enrolled in physics leads to sometimes difficult situations for the minorities. So what's any of this got to do with you and us in this course? Well, if we look at a percentage of students who take advanced courses in physics and maths in grade 12, we can see in some countries like Slovenia and France and Italy and Portugal, there's a pretty even representation of gender in these courses. In Slovenia, in fact, there's even a higher fraction of females who study advanced maths at year 12 level. Australia, however, is at the bottom of both of these tables. We have this split here equal with Lebanon for advanced maths, and this split here equal with Portugal for advanced physics. Consequently, anyone who's come through year 12 in Australia studying maths and physics will be used to seeing a large fraction of males around them. We have a severe gender discrepancy in Australia, and it wouldn't be the case if you'd grown up in some of these other countries. It's a problem that is not particular to us, but is particularly acute in Australia. And we can become blind to this. It's just what we're used to. And actually, we should be really angry about this because there are people who would be really good at these subjects who, for some reason, no fault of their own, are not here with us today. It's because at some point during their schooling, they felt pressured, in a minority, not welcome. And that is something that we can start to change. We need to be the ones that make the difference here. I also need to point out it's not just about gender. Sure, there is an underrepresentation of women in physics, but physics courses also have an underrepresentation of people from ethnic minorities, people of Aboriginal descent, and people who identify as LGBTQI. And there's not much data on these groups as there is in women in physics, but the same principles apply. Anyone who identifies as being part of minority can feel like they don't belong somewhere because they look different and feel different to people around them. It's just a question of whether you feel like you're in the right place or not. If all the people around you look the same as you and behave the same, you feel like you're in the right place. But if everyone around you is different, it can make your life a bit uncomfortable. And so if you, like me, are white and male, then we're used to seeing plenty of similar people around us doing physics, and our lived experience is really not representative of people who are in a minority. So it's especially important for people like us to think about what we can do to help everyone in physics feel welcome. So what can you do? Firstly, don't be a part of the problem. Check your biases and be nice to everybody. Now when I talk about biases, it's really important to know that everyone has biases. Biases save you a lot of time in life. If you grew up in a family where no one ate cabbage, you know, you might think that cabbage tastes terrible and you, you don't want to try it. And, and that's fine. You have a bias against cabbage and good for you. And it's not going to hurt anybody. You don't have to eat cabbage. No one's going to make you. And that's a harmless example of a bias. But there are other biases that can be extremely detrimental to the progress of society and science. For example, there's a bias that has been researched into the way we gravitate towards studying particular kinds of organisms, things with backbones, birds, lizards, reptiles, 
at the expense of studying things like insects. And so we don't know much. Uh, we don't know as much about this huge fraction of life on Earth because we're kind of biased against it. There are also biases in physics. We gravitate towards uh, theories that are symmetric. When we look for something that unites quantum mechanics and general relativity, we look to theories of supersymmetry, theories that are somehow elegant and, to our human way of looking at them, beautiful. But the universe might not respect what a human thinks is beautiful. It could be a highly asymmetric theory that we just haven't found because we are biased towards looking for something that we find elegant. And so biases can hold us back. I guess what I'm saying through all this is that now is a really good time to have a look at your own biases, figure out what you're biased towards and things you're biased against, and make sure these biases aren't hurting your progress in science or the progress of people around you. Uh, if it means that you're saying or doing things that might be hurtful without you realizing, I'm not saying you're a bad person if you're biased, but you can be inadvertently doing things or behaving in a way that can uh, be detrimental to those around you. There's a notion that is sometimes put forward that physics and maths and science is somehow removed from the human experience. We don't care about gender and race and sexuality. We only care about equations and truth. And to that I say, um, we do care about equations and truth, but these experiences of equations and truth are a part of the human experience. These equations and, and these models that we have are developed by humans, used by humans, and the way we use them and things we use them for and the way we discover them is all part of the human experience. And to suggest that this has nothing to do with um, race and gender and biases is, is, is simply not true. Otherwise, uh, we would have seen a rather different proportion of winners of Nobel Prizes from different ethnic backgrounds, different genders, a better representation of humanity doing some of the things that we do. And so it's just not true that physics and science is separate to these issues. It's really a part of it because science is a part of the human experience. And so we really have to be aware of how this human experience shapes the kinds of science that we do in the way that we learn science. There's one particular bias I want to address head on because there have been students in the very recent past at ANU, undergraduate students, have expressed opinions along the lines that they think that women are inherently worse at physics than men. Now we have decades of data from physics courses at ANU where we can look and identify people's um, male, female, gender identity and do statistics on it and we see no difference in the performance of males and females in ANU physics courses. The, the means and standard deviation, deviations are the same. There's no credible research anywhere that shows that women are worse at physics than men. In fact, there's no credible research that shows that any one group of humans is worse at physics than another group of humans. Uh, cognitive abilities across race, gender identity, all, all these things, it, it's the same. And so if this is a bias that you, you think might be affecting you, then um, I encourage you to read some of the research on this and, and think about the fact that um, we don't see a difference in the performance of, of genders in, in physics at ANU. And yet, the number of women who make it through to third year is proportionally lower. So the, the fraction of women in physics uh, at the end of third year is, is lower than it was at first year. This leads us to the conclusion that people in a minority still in physics feel less welcome than perhaps they should. And this is a thing we're trying to address uh, with this discussion, this trying to open up this discussion and understand what it is that is driving some people away more than others and see if there's anything we can do to help that. So you can be a part of the solution and to be part of the solution, really all you have to do is look after and make sure all those around you get the opportunities that they deserve. So super simple example, you know, listen to your classmates when they have something to say. And if you find yourself doing all or a lot of the talking, just be quiet for a while and see if anyone else around you has something to say. Make sure you're not the one in the lab who is pushing all the buttons, let other people have a turn. Um, make sure that people who are shy and maybe not the first to speak up, get a chance to say something if they have something to say. Third thing is if you see poor behavior, then you can call it out. This is something you have a right to do and you'll be supported by the teaching staff. I'm not saying you have to, it's not a, not something we're sort of requiring you to do, but we encourage it because it's often hidden from us and um, it can go unnoticed. So if you feel that someone is being disadvantaged or hurt by behavior of others, please come and, and talk to us about it and 
will support you and support the people who, who need the help. Fourth thing is that you can come talk to us about any of these issues at any time because we're always here to help and here to support anyone who is studying physics. Finally, this is a list of sources for um, what I've been talking about in this little um, slideshow. Um, some things about animal uh, behavior, research bias, symmetry in physics, some gender data, and also an implicit bias test where you can test your own implicit biases. So with that, I say enjoy your course and um, I'll see you later.